Oh, hey you, hey there, what up? Welcome to my channel, welcome back. Mariam here. I am actually back and I've missed you guys. Well, you might not have missed me because I've been here every Sunday, but I have definitely missed you because I've been traveling, I've been busy. So the last time I sat in this chair was over three weeks ago, pre-filming, okay? But I am back and today I have something very exciting to review. It's the new powder foundation from Natasha Denona. I have been sent a lot of shades, not all the shades, but a lot of the shades this is a promising product that is $55, so it better be good, okay? It better be worth it. So let's see how excited I am at the end of this video. Right now, I'm just really happy to be here. Like I said, I missed you guys, so let's get this party started. Subscribe if you aren't already, okay? Follow me on my IG, TikTok, Facebook. Anybody still use Facebook? I do sometimes. Follow me there so that you could be in the know so that we can uh, converse, you know? All right, let's go. Natasha Denona, Hi Glam powder foundation review for you. Let's hit it. Okay, so let's talk about this product first and foremost. $55, $55 is the price tag. I think that is pretty, pretty, pretty up there. It is pricey, but it is not necessarily pricey for Natasha Denona, the brand, because her products are really great. They are in the luxury category. They perform really well. Her brand is really known for incredible eyeshadow palettes, some of my favorites, actually. So I have high hopes for this high glam powder foundation that I actually initially thought was called High Gen Powder Foundation because I do have the High Gen Skin Glass Primer. So for some reason I thought that it was all from the same line, but I guess High Gen, High Glam is not the same thing or perhaps it is. I'm not really sure what I'm trying to say here, but Anyway, the powder is actually inspired by the concealer that came out a few months ago. This is a concealer that I did try. I did review it here on my channel. I believe I liked it for spots, but I did not like it for the under eye. So I have just a few shades here, literally in my filming room that I use sometimes when I'm filming, but um, this is not my most favorite product from Natasha. So I don't really use it in my daily life. Today I'm gonna use it with this product because they are formulated to work best together. So we shall see. All right, so let's go over all of the details. We have nice ingredients. Resveratrol, which is an alternative to retinol. We have flavonoids and elagic acid. These help protect the skin against environmental stressors and pollutants. And it also keeps the skin looking fresh and revitalized. I know that resveratrol is supposed to plump the skin. So those are all nice things. Also, this product is supposed to help maintain the skin's hyaluronic acid to support hydration, offer some anti-inflammatory properties to promote a calmer, more even skin tones, fragrance-free, paraben-free, mineral oil-free, talc-free, D5-free, and microplastic-free. There are 36 shades altogether, but I was sent a lot of shades. I will say there are also tons of different undertones. We have the R undertone, which is a rosy undertone. We also have the P undertone, which is peachy. We also have the neutral and the yellow, and I'll kind of just pop them up so that you can check them out. The difference between peachy and rosy, for example, is not very noticeable, but you can kind of see it when you look at the powders close up. I'm gonna show you all the yellow shades that I got. I got three of those, as well as all the neutrals. Also, we have variants, like a rosy neutral, or a yellow neutral, and I believe we even have a peachy neutral. So there's variants of all these different letters, and I wouldn't be surprised if Natasha comes out with more shades because she's known to do that, so we shall see. I will say the component is really, really, really beautiful. Like this packaging feels extremely luxe, feels expensive. This matte, peachy, beige sort of packaging is very cool. It feels very sleek. There's a mirror here. Then we have the powder component. This flips open. There's another mirror on this side, okay? And we have a little puff. The puff is so dang beautiful. I don't even think I can use this. I will use it, of course, but it is just so pretty. This is reminding me of K-Beauty products. And last but not least, this is made in Italy. And this was actually shipped to me straight from Italy. So pretty cool, pretty cool, really appreciate it. So the way that you are supposed to use these powders, there's actually several ways. You can apply this over the High Gen Skin Glass Priming Serum, which I love. I freaking love this serum so much. It is the most gorgeous opalescent shade of golden. And I love to use this 
all over my face after I apply my Danessa Myricks Blurring Balm Powder to the center of my face. So this I like to use in the perimeter of my face just to give me a little bit more glow, a little bit more dew. I also love to use it on my chest if my chest is exposed or my shoulders. I just use this on its own. This is a genius, genius, genius product and I don't talk about it enough, but this is something that I use in my daily life. I have several of these and I think I got an extra one in this package, so I'm excited. But anyway, you could use this kind of like all over the face as a primer. I'm just gonna apply it to the perimeter of my face. This gives the glassiest glow but it does dry down, so it's nice. And I'm gonna apply it all over my forehead. My skin at the moment is, well, it's going through a moment. So I have two little breakouts over here that are very close together. So together, they are creating a large bump, but there's actually two small breakouts, two small pimples. I believe this is due in part to the fact that it's just been so humid here in New York. I came back from Mexico City, which was very dry. My skin was excellent while there. Also, I was on vacation, so I was not stressed out. And then I came back here and my skin just started to rot as it always does. My skin hates humidity, hates it, hates it, hates it. And it just always erupts, it reacts. All right, so now that I've applied that to the face, I'm gonna test it out in all the different ways that it is meant to be tested out over this priming serum. Also, over this concealer, and last but not least, over foundation. So for foundation, I'm gonna use the Armani Luminous Silk. I'm probably gonna use it on this side of the face. I have some breakouts here as well. Yes, yes, we've been going through a moment. It's fine, such is life. But we are gonna make it work. On this side of the face, I'm gonna use my Danessa on the center and just concealer. So this will be designated as strictly my concealer and powder foundation side, whereas this one, will be my foundation plus powder foundation use this powder side. Can you tell I'm very chatty? Can you tell I missed you guys? I really miss filming. I don't know, sometimes I get in these moods where I have to create my content quickly because I'm traveling or I'm working or I'm doing a lot of things and it almost feels like I have to get through it. But once I stop filming regularly, I begin to miss it so much. Like I cannot wait to get back into this chair. And today was one of those days. I really didn't want to do anything but film. Like this was my number one priority. I knew I wanted to film. I knew I wanted to do unboxings. And so I'm just like really happy to be here. I'm not gonna apply any primer to my forehead. Just that is enough. Let me go ahead and conceal some of these breakouts. I'm gonna use the High Glam Concealer in shade N5, I guess. This is a very, very unflattering spot to have a breakout. Not my favorite spot. It's hard to conceal. It's already textured because there's pores there. Plus, it's so close to the nasolabial fold, it makes this part of the face puffy because it is swollen. So it just makes you look more tired, more aged. No me gusta, mm -mm. this is not a vibe. I honestly don't mind acne that's like on the side of my face or like on the jawline. I feel like that's easier to conceal than like front and center. That becomes much, much, much more difficult for me. All right, I'm just gonna blend that out. Oh, here I am blending this concealer all over my face, like those girls who don't use foundation, but wear their concealer all over the face. That's gonna be me here. Not really. I feel like that is a good enough base. I'm gonna use my Tarte Shape Tape for the under eye. Like I said, I find the Natasha Denona concealer a little bit too heavy for my particular under eye. I don't know why. It just looks a little bit too makeup-y on me, but I think it did a pretty good job for spots, no? That was kind of like my consensus when I reviewed that product and, and it still remains cute. So is the mirror, is my eyelid really dark? What's happening? I am probably gonna go for shade N8 slash N9, which is neutral, 8-9. I'm gonna use the puff, which is one of the ways that you could use it. Swirl some product on this beautiful, gorgeous puff. <laughs> and I'm gonna start kind of pressing that into my skin. Whoa, the pigmentation, baby. It is serious. It is really serious. And I have to say, because this applicator is so precise, you could literally paint this powder on. You kind of see me doing this around my mouth, watch. I think that's pretty incredible. Okay, I do feel that on camera, this shade is a pinch too neutral for me. I think I need a little bit more yellow, just knowing myself and knowing my preferences. I think I'm gonna switch to a Y. I'm obviously gonna keep this one since I already tried it, but I think I'm gonna go for the Y5 slash Y7. What is in my eye and why is it killing me? Just like literally multiple cat hairs in my eye. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna grab shade Y5 slash Y7. So it's a little bit lighter. I'm gonna pick that up. I'm just gonna add it straight on top. You know, one would think that that is a lot of makeup, but the way this is applying on is so seamless, it doesn't even look like powder. The pigment is crazy. And I mean, it looks pretty darn smooth. I mean, that's really not bad at all. I will say this area right here with the two protruding pimples is looking a little bit funky, but that's only because my skin is actually looking really funky at the moment. I think for an area like this, it'll probably be best to apply this powder with a brush and kind of just dilute it, or rather just set the concealer, let the concealer do its thing, as opposed to pounding on more powder on top. So that is what I'm gonna do on my forehead. I'm just gonna pick up the product, the same one, on a brush, I will say though, even a brush picks up a significant amount of product. You might wanna tap that off if using a brush, but I do like the application a little bit better with the brush. It just gives you a little bit more control, but I will say on camera, skin looks pretty freaking smooth. And the powder is kinda piled over here, if you remember. So now I'm gonna take a really small brush, just to kinda go into these smaller areas, making sure that I hit up all the crevices so there's no discoloration or deviation or demarcation. Definitely with the brush is my preferred method. What you can use this very precise applicator for is to spot conceal. So say you have a spot here that you need to smooth out, but I wouldn't actually use the puff as an all over type of application product. Just because I feel like you'll waste the product sooner and really you don't need this much powder. Even if you have a lot of discoloration, the powder itself is pigmented enough that a brush can grab enough product to color correct whatever your issues are. At least for me. In my case, I actually feel like I want to dilute some of this powder. Damn, it looks so good though on camera. Let me show you a close up of what it looks like in my mirror. Not as good as in the camera, but from far away, not bad. It's when you get up close that you can start seeing those two bumps and the pores just being a little bit too, mm, I don't know what the word is, but they are definitely looking very pory to me, specifically here. Here are the bumps, but from far away, not bad. Here's the other side of the face, just for your reference. We are not working with perfect skin, nope. And now let's add foundation and a light layer of this powder to the other side. I'm gonna use the same color. So right now I'm using shade six in the Armani Luminous Silk which is a good enough match. It gets rid of my redness. It covers the spots well enough, but I am gonna actually add a little bit of that concealer because that concealer seems to do some things for me. Is it N5 or N6 that I was using? Or was it Y N6? Man, I'm gonna use N6. I don't know. And a little bit of my Tarte Shape Tape in the under eye. Pretty sure this is not the shade that I used on this side, but that's fine. All right, grabbing shade Y5, Y7, refer brush that sheds a lot, and just a minimal amount of product to set it and forget it. So because that concealer here was a lot brighter than I was intending, I actually need a little bit more powder. So now here I'm gonna grab this puff, I'm gonna dip, and I'm just gonna conceal. Not excellent, but not bad. I do think that this way is probably my preferred method of application. I do like how it's refined my pores when applied with a brush. I kind of just brush the pores down. Oh, there's a centipede. They're considered good, right? Mm, they don't look so good, I will say. Hi, centipede. Back to my video. So I just brushed my pores down and I will say they look a little bit more refined. This side, with the pounding of this very pigmented powder on top of concealer, on top of a swollen, inflamed breakout was just not a vibe. This is not the way to go. And I wouldn't recommend you use the powder this way. However, when applied with a brush, just minimally over your serum or over your primer, like the way that I did on my forehead, or over foundation like the way that I did on this side is definitely the way for me. If you have problematic skin, this is what I would recommend. If you have flawless skin and you just want easy, full coverage, then by all means go in with that puff. It does pick up a lot of product. Okay, let me show you the side by side. So check this out. This looks pretty, pretty natural for a full coverage powder. The fact that you can still see all of my freckles is pretty good. And considering that I have foundation there, I mean, granted, I didn't really apply too much foundation to the freckle part. I'm already well trained not to do that. But still, even with this much powder, 
I think the skin looks pretty natural. Check out the forehead. Not as flawless because I do have some uh, peeling skin here from old breakouts. And then this side of the face with this inflamed area right there, which is just not looking so hot. But overall, from far away, it does look pretty damn put together. I think this is a pretty promising product. I do have to see how it wears. So I'm gonna give it an hour of wear. My skin is super, 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 super oily. So an hour will be enough for me to be able to tell how this wears on me. Because typically my skin produces oils within 20 to 30 minutes of wearing just the powder. So let's hit that good old time warping music for that quick but telling wear test. Okay, I'm back and you know what? <laughs> Back to the wear test. I will say that after two hours of wear, this powder foundation from Natasha Denona most definitely is promising. This is the skin up close and personal. Forehead has gotten a chance to simmer. It's gotten a chance to blend in with my oils. So it's looking actually better than how it did when I first applied the product on. I feel like it looks very natural. I <laughs> did skip some spots, clearly you can tell. There's uh, some um, discoloration here, but overall the forehead looks really good and really natural. This side of the face that I use the powder foundation as powder on top of my foundation looks really, really nice. There's some bumps here. You know what? I should probably tilt the phone a little bit to the light so you could really appreciate the skin, the texture, the coverage, and the finish. I mean, it's been two hours and typically by hour two, I need to blot my face. I don't feel like I need to blot my face at all just yet. Perhaps maybe in the center, which is where I typically get very oily, but overall, I think it looks pretty damn matte still. All right, and now the problematic side of the face with these two pimples here. Okay, this doesn't look great, but that's because the situation here just does not look great. So covering up a textured situation like this with maximum amount of powder on the puff is just too much product. It's going to enhance texture. It's going to enhance whatever the bump or the problematic area is. So I wouldn't recommend it. Instead, I would say use the concealer and lightly, I mean lightly seal it in with just a little bit of powder on a brush. If I would have done that, I have a feeling this would have looked a lot better. But given the fact that I just applied it straight from the pan on top of the puff and kind of just baked it in there. I mean, I did it to myself. That is kind of my story. Those are my thoughts. I'm sticking to it. I think this powder is very, very, very promising. I am going to give this many more tries. This is gonna be a keeper for me. Obviously, I have a lot of shades here, so I will be donating the rest of these, the ones that I did not touch, to um, friends and family. Let me know if Perhaps you saw one of your shades in here. That way, I don't know, maybe I can send it to one of you. So um, keep me posted and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out. I'm out. Deuces.